our next presentation has the title Collaborative Systems Engineering. And uh, as you can tell, live with us, we have our next speaker, Peter Gerber. So thank you so much for joining us. You have been with Scheffler for more than 21 years now. And yeah. 15 years ago, you were responsible for the technical harmonization and PDM integration of the main brands INA, FAG, LUK to one common PDM platform. You have been responsible for the standardization at Scheffler with global responsibility for more than 15 years and counting now. <laughs> Very impressive. And you now set the focus on the standards for collaboration and integration of customers and partners. And since 2015, you have been a proud member of several working groups at ProStep IVIP. So okay. that's the formal uh, introduction of your person. I will leave the rest up to you and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. The stage is yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to give you an overview of our current status and progress of our ProStep iWeb working groups, the SysML Workflow Forum, and the ICF, the uh, uh, Collaboration Forum for Interdisciplinary Collaboration. My name is Peter Gerber, working for Scheffler, and in cooperation with Harold Katzenstein from Daimler, I'm the chairman of the SysML Workflow Forum and the chairman of the ICF. So let's start for, uh, to move forward with our motivation. The mind and the behavior of the society changes over the years. Many years ago, the uh, focus and the products were on the product with technical parameters itself. The people wanted to own this car, they wanted to care for the car. This was the focus in the past. If you have a look on today, the focus lies more on functionality, on first kind of services, on feelings, on emotions. This is what the car uh, manufacturers sell. And in the future, what do we expect? No. With the upcoming new generation, the focus is moving more and more that the people want to have services. They do not want to have a car or a product they want to own, they have to care for. They just want to have mobility. They want to move as soon as, it's, as they need it. So their topic is more the concentration in the future just on the service, a smart service. So, but what does that mean for our, the companies that develop cars today? Well, we have to develop the products of tomorrow. In the past, we developed the product itself. Well, for a technical engineer as I am, well, as long as I focus on a mechanical part, it's easy to handle. But in the future, I do not sell anymore the part itself, the product itself, I sell the service. So with the service, or to uh, develop a service, my work has to change. But how does it have to change? This is the big question that we want to answer. And one more uh, sentence to that main topic. In the past, a car was very mechanical driven. But by the way, even in the future, you cannot drive just by software. Sometimes I have the imagine, <laughs> or I get the imagine that everything is just done by software, but software cannot move you. You always need software, hardware. And somehow you have to find a way to com combine the functions, the best in class of each of the functions to get forward. So, our goal is to make this work. But what do you need to make this work, this collaboration between the different disciplines work? Well, jumping to an easy example, in soccer, there are also different players coming from different uh, countries sometimes all over the world, having different skills, having their strengths in different areas. If you just send them to the field and say, play together, you cannot win. As soon as you combine their ideas, as soon as you combine their skills, then you can reach the goals and you can win almost each game. It all depends on a master plan. A master plan that is kind of an architecture where you organize all the interfaces, the interaction, the core action of the people with their skills. So this is what we have to do. We have to built even for our products of the future, the interaction of the different skills of the different, um, uh, of the different components. So we need an architecture, 
no longer just a single plan on a flip chart. And we need an architecture that contains all of our uh, status that we may have, all the interactions just to move forward. So when we want to have an improvement on our business tasks, we need to move forward with the collaboration. But how can we do this? Well, first chapter here is SysML, our SysML workflow forum. SysML is a suitable solution to document and to describe a complex model, a complex product structure. It's just a documentation, a modeling language. But for acceptance and for industrial usage and to move forward with our topics, we even need collaboration within this topic. So our, uh, we defined our uh, working group. In this working group, in the SysML workflow forum, we decided to focus on the communication between a customer, maybe an OEM, and a supplier, or let's call it a development partner, that may even be a partner that helps a supplier. And we must be able to exchange information, uh, first in the way from a customer to its partner, but also in the way back from the partner to the customer. So how do we proceed? Well, in our uh, forum, we had a survey about planned usage and acceptance and the benefit of planned use cases for SysML. The result was that there are three highlighted topics. The first one is a model says much more than just written text. Having a picture that uh, gives you more information than just trying to read uh, especially a complex system. So first of all, we decided to have the support for requirements engineering, requirements management by systems engineering, by SysML. The other topic that was high prioritized was if you have a functional structure in a SysML, it's much easier to derive uh, actions for verification and validation. So the support of verification and validation by an integrated system model is our second topic. But all of that is nothing if we cannot combine the skills of the different uh, people, of the different uh, people with the knowledge that we bring together, especially as uh, new functions are mostly not created just in one company, but in different companies that come together and bring together their experiences. So our, yeah, one of our core topics is, of course, the model exchange between the companies. So we have these topics. Let's uh, uh, just recall them. First of all, the SysML supported requirements management, the SysML supported verification and validation, and, of course, the SysML-based collaboration between companies, departments, and so on. We have to improve this to make SysML helpful and powerful for industrial usage. So let's jump just with a short look into our three uh, or these three working groups. The base for collaboration, of course, is the model exchange. Uh, the team developed a reference process how this exchange uh, could work in detailed use cases. So we described the use cases, we described the process. Within these process, of course, we thought about what could the use case look like. So in a detailed use case about the exchange, first of all, bringing the model, just a frame model from a customer that wants to have anything to his development partner, but also bringing back a detailed model to the structure of the customer that has to be integrated again then in the system of the customer. This is uh, the use case that we described in detail. It's just one. We have several of these use cases. And at the end, we described a minimal set of information we have to exchange. Let me add this inf uh, short information right here. SysML has a lot of opportunities, thousands of opportunities to solve different problems. What we decided is just to concentrate on a few of these options, a few of these possibilities, just to speed up, 
And with this minimal set of information we need for transfer and for collaboration, we can get faster, and we described right here what we wanted to have. So here we have a filled book of requirements, a filled order book for implementation. And I'll jump back to the implementation afterwards. As I mentioned before, a, a picture says much more than 1,000 words. So we took over the process from the RecIF working group here from ProStep, and we added our uh, points regarding the model-based requirements engineering by SysML to the existing workflow, to the existing process, as one uh, requirement from this work package. Of course, in this work package, we also added uh, the requirements regarding the exchange. And in our third uh, work package, we have, yeah, together with a work package from the requirements management, a huge topping regarded the configuration management. As in a normal development process, you do not exchange the data just once, but you have a world that is changing, that is living. You have to exchange the different uh, versions of a product development several times. You have to update, you have to handle uh, different um, status, uh, different, um, um, different um, derives of a product development, and you have to handle this within your integrated solution and within the complex structure of a company independent uh, collaboration. So here in the um, in our third work package, VNV, the verification and validation support by SysML, we also concentrate on the integrated model and work, uh, exchange workflow. Of course, even here we have the minimal set of uh, information we want to exchange, we have to exchange to collaborate. And in the end, as I mentioned, the configuration, the release process, and the change management we have within a company independent process. Okay, all of these that we collect here are nice wishes. Here the people from different companies come together and we say what we want to have in the future and how we want to collaborate in the future. These are nice wishes. Okay, at the moment it's not Christmas time, so just writing down wishes and hoping that someone comes from the North Pole bringing out the solution. Um, that will not be that sufficient, so we decided to help us on our own. So we decided um, to, imp uh, to create a new working group, a SysML implementer forum, that will start in January, so we have to wait till Christmas time, but in January 2021, this new forum starts. Uh, the head of this team is Dirk Denger from AVL, so also an industrial-driven uh, forum. We address this filled order book that we worked on in the past to this new uh, implementer forum. Um, they will start in January, I mentioned it several times. And I'm uh, looking forward to what these colleagues were in this implementer forum, where all of the important tool vendors are integrated, will bring us as solutions, yeah, hopefully within 2021. We'll see how fast they can solve our wishes. Beside this progress, I want to give you also the information that we are in close collaboration at the moment with the GFSE. Um, the GFSE, the German chapter of INCOSI for systems engineering. Um, the point is, we are caring and we are thinking about SysML to use it in our industrial uh, solutions. SysML is hosted by the OMG in North America, so we want to use a standard, an international standard, and if we have any requirements, if you have requests that cannot be solved by tool vendors or by our own, we also put these requests, these requirements to the uh, organization that hosts SysML, and this is the OMG, and we do this together with the GFSE, so we're in close contact and discussion with these colleagues, so that we want to ha go there with one German requirement book. So far about SysML, um, let's jump to the next point, because now I mentioned the integration and the collaboration between requirements, system architecture, 
and uh, the verification and validation. But if we want to handle a complex product structure, a complex product, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, we need software, we need mechanic, we need electronic devices, and much more. They all have to collaborate. We need the core action. And for this, how to connect this, we started with a project or a forum three, three, a little bit more than three years ago, the CDLC, the Cross-Discipline Lifecycle Collaboration Forum. And I, in the last year here in the symposium, I gave you a detailed overview about what we are doing there. Um, this project has now finished. We brought together our results. At this point, I want to thank, first of all, the tool vendors that supported this uh, organization. And that what I mentioned before in the System Mill Workflow Forum already happened in this forum. So that meant we had the three companies, PTC, ARAS, and Contact, they built demonstrators for our use cases. And we brought together the information, the experiences, in our recommendation. This recommendation will be available up from October 2020. It's in the final loop of release right now. So in one month, I guess, it will be available for all the uh, ProStep members, of course, um, with the results of the, uh, this working group. But if everything is there for collaboration between the different disciplines for an integrated or federated product structure, why isn't this in usage in each of our companies? Well, the answer is simple. There are many prerequisites we have to fulfill to use these tools, to be prepared for this collaboration between the disciplines for interaction of the different uh, departments, companies, and disciplines. So we decided to start a, a, a following uh, project, a successor of the CDLC, and this is the uh, interdisciplinary collaboration framework, and this is also what we plan to do, or what is our content or our deliverable we have to do in the next years. We want to build up this framework that you need to be able to use this uh, collaboration, to be able to have a collaboration between the partners. Of course, we cannot solve everything, but we want to give you hints and opportunities to go ahead. So, our progress, or our approach, let's say in that way, is first of all, we have watched on all the available technologies. We have a look on their maturity and how it, they can be used, how, what is already implemented or what is just an idea at the moment. We bring these available technologies together with principles and development uh, processes, or like agile or anything like that. How can they support our new, new ideas? On the other hand, we have a look on scenarios. First of all, we have in mind the scenarios on a generic level, but we also continue with our detailed scenarios for our example. This is the Mars rover here that is mainly used as an example here at ProStep. So we have scenarios on the generic level and also on the detailed level, deriving up from these scenarios detailed use cases, business-driven use cases, and bring together these, all these informations in a requirement sheet, models, and so on. Also here, a uh, picture helps us much more than just the text. And yeah, we hand over this information again to the colleagues that help us with demonstrators, with a daily business. And what we want to have as a result is, first of all, a harmonized artifact and uh, product structure model. Um, also here, first of all, on the generic level, but also on the detail level with a concrete example, with a detailed example uh, of the Mars rover. Of course, we have a look at uh, uh, what methods do we need, what methods do we use to make that all run. And yeah, at the end, of course, we will have our demonstrator where we can see all the things in detail, how it really works. So. Lunch time is getting closer. I think all of you are getting hungry, so it's time for the conclusion and my last slide. Collaboration is focus. The collaboration is what drives us in the next years. And it means collaboration along the whole uh, deepest of our uh, value creation. So coming from the OEM through all the tiers 
to all the suppliers, we have to collaborate. We have to be able to collaborate. And at the moment, our legacy processes, tools, methods that we use do not support this collaboration to move forward. So we have to define a way to move forward. I mentioned these different, uh, this different forum we had here, have here in at ProStep. They are, from my point of view, this is the platform where different companies can come together, where we can create the future. But for this creation, we need the best people to work together. And that means that we need you. That means do not just trust us that we do it in the right way or we define anything. We need you with your experiences. We need your requirements and your uh, wishes for the future, not only for Christmas time, but also for SysML collaboration. So, yeah, this was my short introduction, what we are working on, what our current status is, and yeah, so time for questions, I guess. A round of applause, please, for Peter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I would call that a classic, <laughs> a classic appell at the end yeah. of your uh, of your presentation. Peter, thank you so much. We did receive some uh, some questions. Could you hear our stomachs growling because you mentioned <laughs> yes, lunch break? Of course, it was very loud. Right, <laughs> we're almost there. We're almost in our lunch break. But of course, we are very thankful for the questions. Thank you for participating. To everyone who did so. Now, I'm going to take it from the top as usual. Peter, is the mention to Tool chain, PTC, contact, areas, etc., plan to be cloud ready, for example, Microsoft Azure. Do you plan to consider SW DevOps as well? First of all, the demonstrators that we built were just built in the cloud solution. Mm -hmm. So they are not just able for it, or we're not just ready for the cloud, we are already using the cloud. Mm -hmm. So um, another point that is very important and was important for me as an industrial representative. Um, I did not just want to have one of these tool vendors just integrating their own tools, all of them integrated on a, a cloud solution, also tools from other vendors. Not each with uh, each other, but each of them had minimum one or two external integrations where they showed us that it works. That was very important for us, this step. All right, thank you, Peter, for answering our first question. Uh, Gray says, hi, Peter, what is the status of the distributed product structure today? Is this vendor specific or are any standards in play? Standards is, uh, in this question, for me, a step too much. What we talk about is just a recommendation how you can solve the problem in collaboration. A uh, standard, for me, is much more. This is where diff many different companies come together and they agree that this will be the way for the future. Here we are just at the point where we say, okay, we found one way that may work and that may help us out of the current situation, that will help us to move ahead. If this will be the right solution for the future and for all the other companies, I think that would be a, a step too much at the moment. So okay. a standard is, from my point of view, much more but it's the first step into the right direction. And the rest remains to be seen, yeah. uh, I, I think. Thank you for that, Peter. Now we have from Lars Christian. Thanks for this great presentation. How do you work together with your partners in the model exchange? Do they use a collaboration platform or do they use their own tools and exchange different data files in your collaboration framework? That's an interesting question. When you uh, ask this question to Scheffler, well, <laughs> at the moment we have no integration and, uh, like that. That's the reason why we drive these projects, this uh, collaboration platform here at ProStep. Mm -hmm. uh, today we have a lot of data transfer to different platforms. Of course, there are in some detailed cases with some customers or some vendors, uh, also we have uh, a little bit of deeper integration, but it's specific from company to company. Mm -hmm. This is why we drive this harmonization or this uh, yeah, company independent approach. And that's Scheffler's approach. Thank you for responding to that. Next up from Ekin, we have the question, what was meant by a, quote, German required a requirement <laughs> book for the collaboration with GFSE? Well, our working group is driven, of course, a lot by the German OEMs and the uh, German suppliers, by the big German, uh, German suppliers. What we want to address to the OMG is, of course, um, what we think how collaboration in the automotive industry, but I have to add, we're not just focusing only on automotive, also uh, aircraft uh, is in our mind. And we are focusing, of course, uh, 
in our German view, here ProStep has its heart beating here in Germany. Also, if there are, and I have to add, we have Toyota in our group and others, but this is our requirement. And at the moment, that was what I received an, uh, as feedback from the OMG, at the moment, especially the German automotive industry does not announce too much uh, into the direction of OMG. We are not really present there and we want to change especially this. But it's not change, only change our... Change when? Is, it, is, it, is the question, does it go too far if I say, are we speaking of changes uh, in the coming year, depending on the current crisis situation? Yeah, well, we have the first uh, connections uh, within, I guess it was it's in October, where the next OMG yeah. meeting is, where we are part, where we bring uh, some of our first requirements there. Okay. And it's just the beginning of the collaboration on this global level. We'll see what you tell us at the next uh, ProStep IVIV Symposium. Now, one last question we have left for you, Peter. You mentioned several ProStep IVIP project groups. How do you ensure that the different projects are working towards one common goal? Well, at the moment, it's uh, easy in that way because we have many of our team members that are in the different, uh, the different uh, forum. So as I am head of two of these forums, a colleague of mine is uh, the head of the digital data package. Uh, then we have a member that is, or several members that are also a member of the uh, RecIF workflow forum. And there are much, many others uh, of these groups. And I think as long as we work together, as long as we exchange our results, we have a lot of meetings together where we just uh, bring together the results, our workflows and so on, that it works, but it depends on the people that we have. So one more time, we need the best people. So you're welcome. Look Join at them. our groups. Look at them. <laughs> yeah. Join our groups. You're a warm welcome. This is all that I can say. What is the most difficult? Maybe we're, we're closing. We have no questions. Just from, from uh, me personally, yeah. what is the most difficult step or the greatest challenge in finding the right partner? Because you got into a lot of detail when it comes to workflow and the steps that you take after the collaboration. How do you find the right partners and the right people to work with in the first place? Well, that's, that's not that easy. Um, the, point is, <clears throat> the point is we have many people uh, with different skills and um, different ideas. And the, the, the difficult point is to bring them first of all together and find the first platform how to communicate. Right. And uh, it, uh, we have a very bright field of different people from different companies, some with software background, many with uh, mechanical background. And at the end, especially this mix, uh, this melting pot of the different uh, skills is what it makes uh, worth to go ahead. But it's a long way and we're, we uh, are open for anyone that wants to join us. <laughs> Keep planting the seed. Plant the seed, Peter. <laughs> Thank you Thank very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. One last round of applause for Peter, our last speaker before the break. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Peter. Have All a good the best. Time. <laughs> Thank you.